So this is our clausius clapeyron equation. And for this equation, you generally are going to be solving for two terms, at least in a lab setting, you'll be solving for, for one or the other of, of these two terms. You're either going to be solving for P2, and I'm going to work out how to solve for P2, or you're going to be solving for delta H. And delta H, I'm going to solve, show how to solve for that one over on that side. A few little pieces of information about this. First of all, we have an R in this term. The R you need to use with the clausius clapeyron equation is 8.314, and watch these units, joules per Kelvin, and then this one right here is a mole. So the reason we have to watch this is because these values are, they tend to be kind of large values, and they're always given in kilojoules per mole. So if you've got something on the bottom and it's a joule, Per Kelvin mole. We're cool with the moles. You can see where the moles would cancel out, but our Kelvin and our Joule, they're not going to cancel out. So one or the other, you're going to have to switch around. Most people switch this and put it in terms of joules. You can mess around with the R and you can put the R in terms of kilojoules, but be aware of that issue with this problem. The R, like all constants, also tells you what your unit of T should be right there. Say so you've got your T going on. You might be thinking, well, how do I know what my pressure unit is? All right, so like in the um, combined gas laws, as long as these two pressure units are the same, you can work the problem, they'll either cancel or the P2 will come out to be whatever unit that the P1 was given to you in. So you don't have to stress as much about the pressure units. All right, so uh, once people see natural logs, they start getting kind of caught up on trying to remember all of their little natural log uh, math functions. I'm going to mention this, but you don't need this to solve the problem, but I'm just going to go ahead and mention it so that you can rule that out. So uh, this value right here, this relationship, what you can do is it helps you, it allows you to subtract natural logs. And this relationship right here, what it tells you is that you're adding natural logs. Okay, the reason you don't need it is because if you have a variable on the inside of a natural log, so like over here, if we had to solve for P2, that's a variable inside a natural log, you can't solve for a variable while it's inside a natural log. You've got to get it out of the natural log. And so the way that we're going to show you to do this, and I'm going ahead and mention it now, and then I'm also going to show it in a minute, is you do both sides, E raised to the and e raised to the, and this whole thing would go into parentheses. When you do that, it makes both of those terms go away and it just becomes P2 over P1. So use e raised to the, don't worry about these uh, relationships right now. I'm gonna erase that for a minute and I'm going to rearrange this in both cases. So in this left case, I'm just going to grab my um, equation right here Oops, I'm going to grab it. Copy, I'm gonna bring them over here. I'm not gonna worry about my parentheses at the moment. All right, so now if I'm trying to solve for delta H, I just need the delta H right here by itself. So I need to multiply both sides by that term. Ignore the line there. So I need to copy both sides by that. And of course, when I do that, this right-hand side will cancel out. And then I need to go ahead and make sure I'm copying it on the other side. And so I end up with this term and that is multiplying. So that's how I get delta H solved for in this equation. Now on this other side right here, if I need to solve for something inside that natural log, I'm going to grab this again. And I'm gonna make it a little bit smaller. And then I'm going to do E raised to both sides. So E raised to that, E raised to that, and then those go away so that I end up with P2 over P1 equals E raised to the delta H over R times parentheses one over T1 minus one over T2.
And then if I need to solve for P2, then I'm also going to multiply both sides by P1. So this whole term is multiplied by P1. All right, so then all you have to do is make sure that you're putting in things correctly. Remember, again, your delta H right here. Um, when you solve this, so as long as you're using the 8.314, joules per kelvin mole this is going to come out in joules and almost always it's going to come out in joules per mole and they're almost always going to ask you to then convert it to kilojoules so just be aware that's almost always what will happen and then make sure that you pair up what's what like the problem won't be all nicely labeled like i have this one you'll have to like make sure it'll it'll be really obvious to be like at this temperature and pressure so it'll be obvious which ones are paired together and then um, I like making like a list or a column or a little grid like this. So this would just be one over 200 minus one over 300 times the natural log of 100 over 10. Now, when you're putting this in your calculator, you should put a parentheses around that and a parentheses around that to be clear. And that will get you your answer. Just make sure you put all that in, just like that, into your calculator. And again, the units on this are going to turn out to be kilojoules. I'm sorry, it's going to turn out to be joules per mole. And then to get a joules per mole into kilojoules, remember that there are um, 1 times 10 to the third joules in 1 kilojoule. That's 1,000 joules in a kilojoule. All right, now on the other side, if we have to solve for something different, like P2, E raised to the, and you just have to make sure this is all in that parentheses and that you've got a lot of parentheses going on with your calculator. So this is 30 kilojoules per mole. Now look, I'm about to have to divide it by 8.314 joules per mole. So I'm going to go ahead and make that 30 kilojoules a joule unit. But if you like going the other way, it's totally fine. One, two, three, one, two, three. So now I've got it in terms of joules per mole. And then on the bottom, one over uh, T1 is, I've lost where it is, there it is, 200 minus one over 300 parentheses and again on your calculator you need to have both of those in parentheses and then the whole thing is multiplied by p1 you can also put it in the front if you want to right over there didn't leave a lot of room so i'm going to scooch my equation over so right there and so this whole thing times and then p1 is 10 kpa Notice that your Kelvin's canceled um, right there. That Kelvin canceled with these Kelvin's. One more note on this equation. If you're into Googling and watching people work this equation online, uh, there is another version. It's not like a huge version. I actually learned it this other way is that um, I, I like, I always like doing final minus initial, but sometimes if you ever see like a negative stuck in the front there, what they also have to do to make that negative true is they have to reverse their T's. So this would become T2 and this becomes T1. So again, if you're Googling it or you're watching someone, I don't want you to get confused about the idea that, oh, well, in this problem, they're using T2 and it's in the place of T1. It's because they throw a negative in there. And this is very common. Um, I'd say you probably see it 50-50 depending on what chemistry course you're taking. So just want to give you a heads up on that too.